I love Cape Breton Island. And if you're ready to start planning your trip to one of the most beautiful places in Canada, I've got 10 of the best things to do and places to see at the top of Nova Scotia. The entire Cabot Trail is a wonder, but there is nowhere else in Canada like the Cape Breton Highlands National Park. Hikers will love it, and the first thing I'd recommend is the Skyline Trail on the western side of the park. Just look at those views. Covering 949 square kilometers, the National Park is majestic, beautiful, and rugged, with 26 hiking trails for all types of hikers. But this trail takes the cake. And near Inganish, you should also check out Middlehead Trail for the astonishing coastal views. If you're driving into the park, the views coming up the western side from Shetta Camp are absolutely astonishing. It's one of the most scenic parts of the whole Cabot Trail. Be sure to stop and take in some of those horizons. Stop and sample an excellent dram of whiskey at the Glenora Distillery in Glenville on the western side of the island south of Inverness. The distillery is settled between beautiful rolling hills and offers tours, there are rooms where you can stay, or you can just stop for a meal. And of course, they also sell their single malt whiskeys with some varieties that are hard to find anywhere else. Distillery tours are brisk 20 minutes and run throughout the day, so you can usually just show up and catch one if you're in the area. They also offer a VIP single malt tasting experience by appointment, so you can try all of their expressions directly from the barrels. Dining at the distillery includes casual meals at the Washback Pub or fine dining at the Warehouse Dining Room. Pleasant Bay on the northwest shores of the island offers a beautiful beach, and it's a great stop along the Cabot Trail driving through the Highlands National Park. But if you plan ahead, it's also the perfect place to go whale watching. Boats go out during the summer, and on your two hour trip, you may see seals, eagles, and a variety of whale species, including humpback whales. You'll learn a bit about the whales and some tours offer the chance to hear their songs onto water thanks to special microphones. Weather may impact when tours can operate, especially in high winds or bad weather, so be sure to keep that in mind or call ahead where possible. The town of Bedeck is completely charming with the most beautiful views across the Brodeur Lake. And I highly recommend a relaxing stay at the Inverary Resort while you're in town. And while you're there, you need to visit the Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site for a look back into the history of the great inventor's life when he lived in the picturesque town. The park surrounding the museum is a great spot for a picnic or a stroll. And then inside, you'll find some of Bell's most surprising discoveries and inventions. There are full-sized recreations of his planes and hydrofoils, instruments and objects from his labs, and a look at what his inventions have meant for the world. Activities, experiments, and even white glove tours are available in the summer. It's a fascinating museum that makes the great man's story come alive. A short drive from Sydney, the Fortress of Louisbourg National Historic Site is one of the most amazing historic places that I've ever seen in Canada. Built by the French in the 1700s and then burned down by the invading English forces a few years later, the fortress and small village was actually rebuilt in the 1960s to show off the incredible history and stories from the people that lived and worked here. 
The fortress comes alive thanks to the wonderful interpreters who address the parts of soldiers, workers, and staff going about their daily jobs. You can take a tour, explore the buildings, and learn about the stories from history, including fantastic Indigenous experts in the Mi'kmaq Interpretive Center. And there are restaurants, a gift shop, and yes, even a bar. You can easily explore the fortress for an entire day, and I would recommend planning for at least three to four hours. Nova Scotia has some of the best beaches in the East Coast, and Cape Breton Island offers a wide range of options from relaxing swimming spots to rugged natural shores. One of my family's favorite beaches was Inverness Beach in the town of Inverness, where you can relax on the sandy shore, take a swim, and look for washed up sea glass and pottery. For a more rugged natural spot, Black Brook Beach is striking and raw with lines of evergreens along the shore and a waterfall alongside the nearby hiking trail. Really loving Inverness Beach. It's right in the town of Inverness in Cape Breton and we've been exploring looking for uh, sea glass and beautiful rocks and there's so many colors to the rocks here and everyone I see along the beach is stopping to pick up rocks and shells and little things. It's, it's wonderful and it's a beautiful spot. You could easily walk here for a few hours. Huge beach just stretches, seems like for at least a couple of kilometers. It's wonderful. One of those classic kind of Cape Breton slash Nova Scotia beaches. North of the town of Shetty Camp, you'll also find the Petit Tang Beach or explore the beaches along the southwest shores by the fortress of Louisburg. There are lots of options depending on where you're visiting Cape Breton, so bring your swimming trunks and take a walk by the waves. Member 2 in Sydney offers a lot of history about the area and the Mi'kmaq people who have lived there for thousands of years. Member 2 Heritage Park offers a fantastic museum and a gift shop with indigenous art, but you can also take part in workshops at the center to create beaded earrings, baskets, and even drums. The center also offers a medicine walk to learn about the roots, mosses, leaves, flowers, and berries that can be used by the Mi'kmaq people, and that includes a traditional tea ceremony experience at the end. You can take self-directed tours of the museum to learn more about the culture, history, and people of the area for a small fee as well. For campers, Cluscap Ridge is one of the most unique destinations on the East Coast. The RV park and campground also offers glamping options and it's owned and operated by members of Member 2 First Nation. Accommodations are variable year round and the campground has gorgeous views looking out over St. Anne's Bay. There are activities, hiking and culture, and drum ceremonies with opportunities to learn about Mi'kmaq culture from elders and experts. If you're a craft beer lover, Cape Breton is the place for you, with dozens of bars, breweries, and restaurants to try some local brews. In Inverness, I was blown away by Route 19's incredible restaurant and all of their beer on tap. When I visited, they had 12 different varieties available, and you can get flights from the bar or purchase cans to take home. A few other favorites included Breton Brewing, Big Spruce, or Try Island Folk Cider House. Last but not least, one of my favorite areas to explore on the island were the towns and coastal areas north of Highlands National Park, from Neal's Harbor on the east to Pleasant Bay on the west. There are towns like Dingwalls, numerous hiking areas like Peak Tenerife Mountain, or the area leading to the grave of the unknown sailor. There are also a few lighthouses, lookouts, and places like Bay St. Lawrence. And when you're ready for lunch, I highly recommend a stop at the incredible Morrison's Restaurant in Cape North. They have seafood chowder, fish cakes, clams, and the most incredible desserts. Try the Neil Angus Burger or the Aspie Burger, and for dessert, you can't beat the strawberry shortcake. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.